Hello YouTubers, my name is Lucas Ridley with DigitalCreatorSchool.com. And in this video, I want to show you what my workflow is like when I incorporate 3D animation with 2D animation in After Effects. If you wanna learn how to create explainer videos, I have a course uh, that teaches you how to do that um, called How to Create, uh, How to Animate Explainer Videos. And this lesson is actually just kind of a, a bonus update lesson to that course. If you're also interested in learning 3D animation, I have classes on that as well. But uh, you know, continue watching and follow along and see the workflow I use on how I incorporate 3D animation into my 2D animations in After Effects with Maya. Thanks for watching and hopefully I see you in class at digitalcreatorschool.com. Thanks for watching. Okay, so let's jump right in and see what we're gonna recreate. This is from an actual client project that I made and this is what we're gonna recreate. Um, not this animation, This so there's this animation that happens and that actually has some 3D elements in there, um, but the one we're gonna make is this transition from this kind of badge uh, look into this book, which are these lines. So we have this kind of rotation and then the yellow kind of um, expands out to create the uh, book cover. So we kind of have this rainbow look, but the book cover is the two yellow ones. So in, in After Effects, this was just super simple. I mean, th these are just masks, you know, getting rotated and um, these ribbons that I show you how to make in the course, uh, the explainer uh, course, um, you know, that's just another mask. So those masks get expanded out and animated and then we're left with this one frame. And so essentially the workflow, which this is really, this video is gonna be more of a workflow tutorial, not, you know, here's every button you press. I just wanna demystify this process. Um, so you can apply it with whatever 3D package you use. I'm gonna use Maya. And if you're not familiar with Maya or you wanna learn it, I teach a bunch of other classes about it. Um, you're you know, free to check into those. Um, so basically the workflow for this transition, I'm just gonna play it back. So we go from these badges, we have this transition, and then we go to the book. So it's a pretty seamless transition. But the one trick is we are um, switching over on one frame. So you can kind of see where it, the edges, we start to pick up the shadow of the book cover um, right here. So between these two frames is where the switch happens, but when you're playing it back, you can't see even that little bit of a switch. It happens so quick over one frame and we match it so well that it's kind of invisible. That's this like invisible cut. So I wanna show you how I did that and we're gonna recreate it uh, you know, somewhat. I'm, I'm just gonna go through the workflow and uh, show you how it was done. So let's say this is what my After Effects project looks like. I've done everything up to this point, right? So these are After Effects masks and you know solids and um, that you should all know how to do by now if you're watching the explainer course. And um, so I basically want to render out uh, all the way up to here. Um, I went ahead and rendered out this whole thing just so you can kind of have it and see it. If you're an, an enrolled student, you can download these in the project files along with this uh, 3D book rig. Um, but so the idea is to render out images, and for Maya specifically, you wanna render out uh, JPEGs and use this format. If you can see down here, it says image sequence dot, and then it has the number, um, so it'll render out the numbers of the uh, frame numbers. But the important thing here uh, that Maya really likes is the period right before the frame number. If this is an underscore, you might need to rename this in something like Adobe Bridge and do a batch rename. Um, so just make sure you have a period right before the frame number in when you're exporting this out of After Effects so Maya understands it and can pick it up. So let's jump over to Maya. And here is the book rig that I've made, which again, you can download as part of the project files if you are an enrolled student in, the, in this class. Um, and so the general idea is now we need to get those images that we've already, we've rendered out of After Effects. We need to bring these into Maya or whatever 3D package you're using. So the way to do that is we need a camera that we're gonna render from. So I'm gonna to go to panels, uh, create a new camera, and I'm just gonna kind of move kind of quick through here because again, this isn't like a step-by-step -step tutorial. This is more of a workflow tutorial. So I wanna get the camera lined up here with its attributes. 
And um, so it's exactly centered on the book. <clears throat> and then, you know, the one big difference between uh, going from 2D to 3D is the lens distortion of cameras where, you know, if we're in After Effects, this is all very flat and we're not getting any, any distortion or perspective necessarily um, because it's just whatever we created as a shape. Whereas when you're in 3D, you can start to see, see this black line here. That's from the perspective um, and the type of lens and focal length that we're using. So we can control that over here in Maya. And to kind of compress all this down, we need to choose a much higher focal length, which also means we need to zoom the camera back out. And now you can see that that black line is much skinnier here, right? So the larger the focal length, I went to 200 millimeters. This is in millimeters. Um, this is just like if you had a, a DSLR and you put a 200 millimeter lens on it, it's gonna compress the uh, image a little bit. So uh, everything's a little flattened. And when we're matching 2D to 3D, um, sometimes we need to do that in the camera so that we don't have, you know, let me go back to 35 millimeters, which is the default. We don't have this big black line here, which is just part of the uh, perspective of a 3D object. So we wanna flatten that perspective a little bit by doing a bigger focal length. All right, so now we have the camera figured out. Now we need to bring in the image. So in Maya, there's a, a, a couple ways to do that, but the most obvious and easiest way is to go down to environment and create an image plane. All right, when we hit create, we'll get a, you see this little yellow uh, X pop up, and now we're under the image plane tab, uh, just automatically by creating one, it puts us in there, and it's asking for an image name, and we wanna bring in the sequence of images that I've made. Um, so let me just jump over to those. And you can just select any one of them and it should bring them all in as long as you hit this button that says use image sequence. And the other little caveat to that is um, it will place the, I'll just hit four on the, so we can see through the book to the image plane. Um, the only caveat to this is it's gonna number, you can see this says 947. So it's taking the frame number from After Effects so it's, it's gonna line up with that frame number in Maya. So you might need to extend your timeline so that um, your image sequence is actually there. You could also offset it with this uh, feature here, but just to keep things one-to-one, -one, I kinda, you know, there, there's no reason, it's not like I'm doing a big sequence, there's no reason to have to offset things and then get confused about frame numbers. So I try to like to match it in Maya as well. So let's go to that frame. So now we have the sequence. Now we can just match up to the frame that we want to uh, match it to. And um, then we can uh, choose which frame we wanna match. So I think it's maybe this one when it's kind of finished doing its animation and we have this still frame. So I'm gonna hit five to bring back, or sorry, six with textures. And um, I'm just gonna toggle this. So it looks like we might need to basically just adjust the camera until it matches with the background. So I'm gonna to toggle between four and six. <clears throat> the other thing we can use, there's a little grid system up here. So we can see if we toggle that off. Um, let me just say, let me tear this off and turn on and off the polygons because we we're seeing the wireframe of the book. So um, I could actually just say uh, six and then use this to toggle everything. So it looks pretty darn close, right? Like that was super quick. That took like, you know, a few minutes. And now we've already matched up the files, uh, the, the image sequence of the 2D image with the 3D object. So we just needed to match on that one frame. And then we can animate this book from this point forward in any way that we want that will make sense with the 2D animation. So in the 2D animation, we basically have it rotate in and then it zooms away. So that, that's kind of like a nice smooth transition. We could keep rotating it because we're going from right to left rotation. So maybe we could even keep rotating it, um, but it does have this little pause here. So it'd kind of get hitched. It'd be a little hitch there. Um, so there's a little bit of a settle. So it makes sense that, you know, I ended up doing a zoom out. That's just kind of the easiest transition there. Um, and so when we jump back into Maya, I'm not gonna go through the whole process of animating this, but um, I'm gonna go to a uh, two up view just to kind of give you a quick view of what that might be like. I'll do a two pane side by side. 
and then uh, choose perspective here. And so you can even see the image plane back here that we're matching to. And this is where the book is in 3D space. So um, yeah, have, have fun with this. Try to recreate it. Uh, I rigged the book and uh, it's pretty it's pretty basic rig, but you can actually, you know, if you're an enrolled student, you can download these project files. I encourage you to actually try this, um, try to recreate this for yourself. So basically what you're gonna do is, uh, you know, frame 777 is what we're matching to. Um, and you can basically from this point forward, ignore the image plane. So we can even say uh, show and turn off the image plane here. And I'm gonna turn off the grid that we turned on to try to line it up. And I'm also gonna turn off the NURBS curves here cause we're not gonna see that in the render. And I'm gonna turn on the film gate so we can see what the film gate is. And then I'm gonna turn off the grid so we can kind of get an idea. And I'm just hitting Alt B to change the background color. Um, you know, we could also bring in a plane that's green colored like this um, if we really wanted it kind of one for one it. But when I created this, I just did uh, rendered an alpha channel. So I just brought this without a background from Maya and used the background in After Effects because it was 2D. It's not like it, there was any shadows or anything on it. Um, and if you wanted to, I don't think I did. You could fake a shadow here is really what I should have done because you don't anticipate it hitting anything here. This is one way I would improve this is to add a ground shadow. And I would just fake that using uh, masks and After Effects. And uh, you know the shadow would be bigger here and then it gets to the size of the book here just to give it something to sit on here and make a little more sense. But so how, how would it move forward from this point in Maya to get there is, you know, go forward however far you want to. I'm also gonna, you know, now that we know where the animation is gonna be, I'm gonna definitely bring this way down. So it, when I'm scrubbing in the timeline, it's a lot easier to see kind of what we're doing. Um, I'm gonna start from that first frame here. And then let's just pull this back and we can just start animating this thing however we want. We can also animate the camera instead of animating the book itself. Um, you know, we, we could always animate the camera if that's easier or do both, um, especially with the focal length that might be easier to animate the camera just because we're zoomed so far out and, and with the uh, focus uh, focal length that we have the lens on, it might be easier just to pull the camera back and animate the camera like that. Uh, but again, I don't want to. I don't want to mess up my camera <laughs> on this. Well, I guess I, I am on eight. Um, I'm on frame eight twenty six, so it doesn't matter. We have a. We just need to make sure we keyframe. If we're going to do that, we got to start with a keyframe, because because if I started moving this, you know, there's no keyframe here, so I can't get back to that. Um, open in bracket is the way to go back and forth between keyframes in Maya. Um, if you are trying to keep up with Maya stuff, and. So that could be also one thing to keep in mind. You might want to lock, if you're not going to animate your camera, you might want to lock these attributes. So I can go down here and say lock selected. So now I can't accidentally change that view that we definitely wanted to keep it locked on. Um, but so yeah, here's the beginning of, of that animation. And um, you know, it's a little slow. So then you just start going in here and massaging the animation, however you want it to go. And that is how you start to incorporate um, 3d into your 2d work and then if you i wanted to include the end of it because you can kind of see how we get out of this too so we do this and I, I think i did maybe animate i think i animated the book here and then it fell down and then i animated the camera on the second half and then the book opened to this and then i just used this as a um, mat for the image and then we zoom into the book basically um, and that's how we get out of the 3d moment we're back into 2d here so we kind of went, this was a hybrid 2D, 3D thing. The emblem here in the middle was 3D. And then I used 2D everywhere else until this kind of switcheroo moment over one frame. And then we're back to 3D. And then we zoom into the book here and we're back to full 2D. So that's how I did it for that project. Um, definitely, uh, you know, it's really simple concept. You switch over one frame. And how to do that is rendering out the image, matching it in whatever 3D package by bringing in an image plane. And then, uh, yeah, animate however the heck you want to animate because now you're freeforming, uh, you know, the 3D stuff. The other thing I'll say about 3D 
getting that 2D look is just keeping the shader super simple. You can see here, you know, there's no textures or anything. It's super basic because I'm trying to match the style um, of what I was already doing in the, the kind of theme of these colors and um, all that. So it's very directionally sh uh, lit. So there's just one kind of uh, shadow there. It's not like lit with multiple... Um, too many directional lights but it was a you know a hard i wanted a hard shadow and uh it would make sense with the style of the 2d stuff that i was doing so basically this is how you you know get going and i could you know finish this out but um i will let you guys do that and i will see you in the next class uh, or next uh course hopefully if you decide to join um any of my maya classes you will get a much more in-depth look at how to use Maya and to begin to incorporate that into your uh, motion graphics work. So again, uh, I hope you enjoy and I look forward to seeing you guys try to recreate this for yourself and um, learn Maya with me as well. So I hope to see you in class and thanks for watching. Bye.